Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody had a lovely New Year's Eve and a very Merry Christmas. So in this episode I'm going to mainly be focusing on rebuilding my 110's rear axle and I want to get one thing straight off of the bat, yes I am rebuilding this in a bathroom. So yes I am going to be sat on the toilet whilst rebuilding a Land Rover axle. First things first, and here are some brand new bolts that are already corroding. If you remember from a previous episode, those were the bolts that I struggled to get out before, so I've just replaced these with some brand new ones. Here I am just giving the inside of the axle tube a little bit of a clean. On the top where the tends to sweat from the oil, they end up getting a little bit of corrosion in there. It wasn't too bad in this one, but since it was all disassembled, I just took the opportunity to give it a good clean out. This is just a wire wheel on a drill bit attachment, a special drill bit attachment. I could get right down in there as you can probably see. It is putting some slight score marks on the inside of the axle tube but I figured these would work a little bit like honing marks in an engine. I figured it would just kind of help hold the oil on the inside of the axle casing. So hopefully now it won't sweat and corrode like it has done before. And again, it wasn't too bad, it was just something that I wanted to do. Then I just used the vacuum to get all of that dust out of there and make sure that it was clean. I just made sure to properly clean the inside out again just to make sure that nothing contaminates the new oil that'll be going in there. Here's the brand new stub axle ends. Because the other ones were really worn, so here's a brand new pair of those. That's a brand new Cortico stub axle in an oil seal there. I'm just getting that started by pressing it in and of course sticking with my less than ideal scenarios I am doing this in a hallway. I'm just tapping that down with a 32mm socket there. I'm just going to keep tapping that down until I feel and I can hear the sound that it's hit home. So as you can see that's what it looks like when it's correctly fitted. So that little seal just helps the grease not mix with the oil inside there and it actually goes around the half shaft. And here I am just getting ready to fit it to the axle now. I'm just giving it a slight smearing of grease just to hold the gasket on as well. And then I'm just putting a slight smear on the end of the axle on the end of the flange. This just helps to soften the gasket a little bit and help it on its way to sealing. And it also just helps to keep the gasket stuck to it while I'm trying to put this on. I'm just aligning up the bolt holes now. I tried to make sure there wasn't any or too much grease in those bolt holes because it will interfere with the Loctite I'll be using on the nuts later. And as you can see there, I've just smeared that surface with a bit of copper grease. And I will be fitting some brand new inner mud shields on there as well. And that's the bolts in there now. I did use 10.9 tensile strength bolts. I did have to order these specially. I wouldn't recommend, if you are doing a similar job to me, I wouldn't recommend using the normal 8.8 .8 bolts. These bolts should be rated up to the 10.9 tensile strength. The bolts in question are the gold coloured bolts. I'm just giving these a quick nip up now. Off camera I did clean these up with a tap as well so any bolt holes I cleaned up with a tap. The tap that I'm using is the same one from a previous episode that I used to fit the diff pan with. The ones that I'm nipping up currently have a nylock nut on the other side. The high tensile strength ones, the 10.9 tensile strength ones, the gold, are into blind holes so there's no nut on the other side. So once all those bolts are nipped up, I'm just setting my torque wrench and now I'm going to be torquing them up to the correct tension for those flange bolts. So here I am just torquing them all up. I'm just using a star pattern as well to torque these up and then I'll go around in a circle just double checking that they are all clicking off and all torqued up correctly. So here are my freshly painted hubs, any areas that I didn't want paint on I just masking taped off and stuffed newspaper in just so that no paint whatsoever contaminated any of the inside. 
and because I wanted to go the extra mile that's why I painted these it may be a bit overkill to some people but I just wanted to do it just to make sure that I go the extra mile for this vehicle because I do really care about it now I'm just tapping out the old races I am really glad I changed these bearings actually because judging by the races they very much needed doing I'm just using a normal steel drift there just because I'm not too bothered about damaging these races because I am replacing them so I just made sure that the inside of these hubs were clean and then gave it a little bit of a greasing these are brand new OEM Timkin bearings and races they come in a kit like this and if you are doing this job I really wouldn't recommend anything other than Timkin bearings and races especially for the price of them because they're not that expensive at all they are brilliant quality guaranteed quality as well I just really wouldn't recommend anything else if you are doing this job and I personally wouldn't use anything else and this is my blue spot seal and bearing driver there as you can see that's quite a good size for the race that I'm tapping in I have got a brass drift there which you can use the idea though is if you're using something like I'm using this kit that it drives it in square or for it to be at least a softer metal just something softer than the race so that you don't damage it in this matching set I've tapped the race in which has hit home now and I'm just pushing grease into this Timkin bearing so I'm really trying to work this grease in this is a technique that you might have seen before but plenty of other people use it it's the guaranteed way of really forcing and pushing that grease through those rollers and through the entire bearing so it is this stage that will kind of determine the life of the bearing really it will just determine the service life that you are going to get out of it how good of a job you do right now so I am really trying to force the grease through there through all of those rollers into the bearing and that's what it looks like when you can see it's pushing through the rollers like that it means you are doing a good job if you're going to be doing this yourself if you are doing this job try not to drop it because if you get any grit in there it's essentially game over and I were really really trying to grip that bearing whilst forcing the grease through I just like to have a good amount of grease in my hand really push that through and once that grease has disappeared I know that it's gone into that bearing then and then I'll get a new bit of grease and force that bit through as well the idea is that you want to really force that grease through till you have nothing left and then of course when you've forced enough through that no more is coming out of the bearing no more can go into the bearing that's when I know I've done a good job just a nice little light fingering of grease in there now and in goes the bearing now I'm just going to fit the oil seal as you can see it says this way up to stub axle again another technique you may see other people using is just using the old race as like a fitting tool and just using this to tap it down home I do sometimes find this a little bit tricky personally you may be able to tell but this one is tipping a little bit sometimes it is unavoidable because they are a little bit awkward to go in and again sometimes I personally struggle with it you really want to go timid with this if you are doing this yourself because if these do distort they are just absolutely useless I always do have spares just in case something goes wrong but I always aim to do the job once so again just taking my time and really making sure that this goes in square maybe it's just me but I find these sometimes just don't want to go in as I've said and it is a little bit of an awkward job because I don't want to distort it so I am just going at this really timidly but once they get over that initial lip they are fine and according to the workshop manual which I am following these need to be inserted and then to a four mil depth around the circumference and as you can see I am using my blue spot drivers again to assist me and there it goes I don't know if you saw but it just popped in there and it is more or less already to four mil so I'm just going to double check really eye it up and make sure that it's to the correct depth so I'm just checking it out now and I am happy with that so I'm off to go fit it now I did have to put that bearing in there to put the oil seal on but I'm not actually going to fit the other bearing yet as you should only fit bearings exactly when you're ready to use them to install them because you don't want any grit or contaminants getting on there especially when it's all greased up it's just asking for contaminants to get stuck to it so I'm not doing that just yet these are my brand new Delphi brake discs I got Delphi ones just to match the calipers more than anything 
And of course, here's Laddie just making sure I have done a proper job as normal. After all, he's the Clarker Works. I'm just fitting the brand new brake disc now. And I'm just using some strong Loctite. This is just by JB Weld, but you can use any Loctite for these nuts. Any thread locker will do, just a nice strong heat resistant one. And because I can be quite forgetful sometimes, I do try and use new components wherever possible. So I have got majority of new things and new bolts. But you may notice that I'm going to be using two of the older bolts. And whilst I'm still indoors, I'm just using my gun here to nip these bolts up, just to get the disc seated and start these off. And again, I'm remembering that star pattern. And again, this is just pulling the brake disc home onto the hub. And once they are all nipped up, I'm actually going to take this out and place it inside the wheel like this. And this just holds it steady. So I can just use my torque wrench to torque these bolts up and I'm not the strongest person in the world so it is a little bit of a struggle some of these, torquing some of these nuts up for me but I'm just trying to use my torque wrench to accurately click all of these off. So again I'll work in that star pattern and to double check I'll go around in a circle and click them all off again just to check that they are all torqued up correctly. I actually forgot to capture it. I have actually fitted the backing shields, the backing plates there. But now it's ready, I'm just slipping the disc and hub assembly. I'm just fitting that onto the stub axle, onto the axle now. I haven't put the bearing in there, but it is all pre-greased and in its packet ready for installation. Just ready for me to slip in there whilst I assemble everything else. But yeah, that's how it's looking at this stage. I wonder how many of you have actually seen a axle being rebuilt next to a toilet? So again, skipping forward in time a little bit, I am I do sincerely apologise for the haphazard nature of these clips but this is just me inserting the half shaft now. I don't know if you saw that there, that little smooth portion that interfaces with the oil seal on the inside of the stub axle that you saw me fit earlier. And this is just how I fit together the wheel bearing. So the bearing is put in there, then goes on the thrust washer piece. And this is a little technique I've learnt from Mike over at Britannica Restorations. So I just bob it onto the bearing and then just spin it until my hands slip round. So you just bob this on and turn and seat the bearing and then I just turn it until my hands start slipping. And that is the preload that I use for the bearing. And then once that preload is set, I then put on my locking nut. And again with the socket, just turning that, just spinning that on and then I use the torque wrench to torque this up. And again, as Mike says, this doesn't need a lot. And then once this has clicked off, I'm just bending over the tabs of the locking washer. One needs to be bent over the rear nut like this. And I'm doing this quite timidly at first, just so I can 
tap it onto the flat bit of the nut on the inside. Unfortunately, you can't see it, I couldn't see it. Um, so you just have to kind of go at this a little bit blind, but just take care if you are doing this yourself. So I took a lot of care and just went at this quite timid at first. And again, this is just more for demonstration purposes. So it's not bent as much as I would like usually because I had to kind of crane a little bit for the cameraman that sat on the toilet. That sounds very strange, but you know the situation. But this is what I was aiming for when I got better access because as I say, the other portion was just for demonstration purposes. When I could get in, I did a proper job of it. So this actually locks the two nuts together just so that they can't move. I don't know if you saw, but I did pack inside the hub with a little bit more grease. That's just for the bearings, but no more than 75%. Otherwise, it is just liable to overheat. So 75% of grease is all that you need if you are doing this. So just giving the end of the half shaft and inside the flange a little bit of a grease in. Even though these are gonna fail certainly sometime soon, especially on these 110 axles. They are just notorious for chewing up these little thin dry flanges. I did consider putting some heavy duty ones on but I am sticking to OEM parts for now. And that is a new gasket going on there after a bit of a grease smearing. So just sliding that drive flange onto the half shaft now and onto the axle. These are the new bolts supplied in the little OEM kit. As you can see, that pink on the thread there is already thread locker on there. That's the pink stuff on the thread. So if you are doing this and you get these bolts, you don't have to lock tight them. They are already pre-thread locked. Just slipping them in there so that it locates before I start nipping them up. As I've said previously, I have just tried to use new components and things like that on this axle rebuilding where and if I could. I think the only thing I haven't actually done is rebuilding the final drive unit itself. Again, just using my gun to nip these up. Again, it's just for convenience. Now I'm clicking these bolts off with my torque wrench again. Working in the star pattern again and as you can see I've now got a breaker bar wedged in there. Just between those two studs it just stops that from spinning then and just makes my life a hell of a lot easier because I was trying to hold it at first whilst I was nipping them up but while I was talking them up I just wanted something a little bit more stable. It's just working as an anchor essentially. In case you are wondering why this looks a little bit weird on those threads there are still little bits of masking tape around them just to protect them. Now I'm just fitting the circle clip on the end of the half shaft there and I'm just covering it with my hand to make sure if it does ping off it doesn't go straight in my eye. Don't know if you saw that but it just clicked into place there with a little tap. All I used was my punch just to tap that in a little bit and as you saw it clicked in. And as with any circle clip, I'm just tapping it round there just to make sure that it is seated correctly. If it's all happy and free spinning like that, tapping it round a little bit, then it's correctly installed. I'm just putting a little bit of grease inside that hub cap just to help it out and keep some grease in there and prevent a little bit of water ingress. And that popped on quite nicely. And that's that side essentially done now. And while I've got good access while the caliper's still off, I'm just dabbing it down with a little bit of brake cleaner. I'm actually using the brake cleaner quite liberally, really, and dabbing it with a clean tissue just to remove any contaminants. And they are shipped with a solution on them to stop them from going rusty or prevent them from going rusty. So here we are with the brand new AP Lockheed calipers, just offering those up. And again, here's the brand new OEM bolts pre-Loctited thread locker on there again, so no need to use any 
And again, this looks a little bit awkward because I'm trying to give the camera the best view, so I was trying to screw this in whilst not hogging the whole screen. I just wanted to give you guys here the best view just so you could see what I was doing. So I'm kind of craning my neck in a bit of an awkward position. So that's the caliper in place and the bolt's just nipped up with my fingers. Now please don't shout at me, I know you're not meant to use a torque wrench as a ratchet and not to make excuses up, it was actually my birthday when I was filming this. It was really late in the evening and I just got a little bit lazy and now I'm just torquing them up. Just clicking those off now and double checking them both and as you could see it got a little bit wobbly towards the end there because the cameraman, bless him, he had to hold the axle because it started spinning with the amount of torque that I was putting on them and I didn't want to, I didn't want the axles spinning at the same time so it were a little bit shaky but it was fine it, it didn't cause any damage to anything and sticking with the Delphi theme and again I do usually use Mintex and things like this for calipers and things like that but I thought I'd give Delphi a go so sticking with that theme so I'm just applying some copper slip to the back there so I'm applying it to where the piston contacts it which is good practice with any brake pad if you are going to do this yourself. Not using too much though because I don't want this washing off and contaminating the brake discs or anything like that. Brand new retaining clip and spring going in there now. So this helps them keep in position, but it also helps to keep them separated. So they're not making squeaky noises as you're traveling along or like chattering away against the disc. It just helps keep a little bit of tension on there. So locating pins in place now, just bending those little split pins over and tapping them. Again, a little bit awkward because I was working around a bath and the camera trying to give the best view. And that's those fitted now. So I was really excited at this stage because I only had the other side to go and this was pretty much done. There was like an ending in sight finally after months and months. Just on, as you can see here, just on to making the brake lines now. Making some brand new little Kunifer brake lines. A nice little end flare there for you. But that is where I'm going to leave it today. I hope you join me again in the next episode. There is another part coming to this, but there is an end in sight now, which I was super happy about. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.